I was working late one night in my office, trying to finish writing a report that was due in a few days. I had some tea to help keep me energized, and was trying to get it all done as fast as possible. Staying up late was a regular thing I had to do for work, and it's always been difficult for me to maintain focus once I start getting tired. Anyway, as I worked in my office, and somewhere around 11, there was a knock at the front door. I got up and looked down the hallway. I didn't know why anyone would be at my door at this time. I walked down to the other end of the house and looked out the peephole, but nobody was outside on my porch. I took a step back and thought that it may have not actually been the front door. I was so focused on work and was on the opposite side of the house, so when I heard the light knocking sound, I just assumed it was someone at the door. I didn't know what else it could have been, but I just went back to my office and started working again. Maybe I should have been more worried about what the knock was, but I was so tired and wanting to get my work done that it wasn't even on my mind after a few minutes. I stayed on the computer, typing away for the better part of an hour. Nothing else seemed to happen as far as the knocking went, but I was getting exponentially more tired by the minute. My workflow was slowing and my eyes were getting heavy, but just when I was going to call it a night, I reached over for my tea and right in the window across the room was a pair of eyes staring back at me. All I could tell from the moment was that it was a man, but he quickly ran away from the window after I saw him. My heart was pounding in my chest and I just sat there with my eyes locked on the window. It was so unexpected, I was almost in a daze. After a moment, I stood up and ran over to cover the window. I didn't know who that was or why he was looking into my house like that, but it being almost midnight made it all the more terrifying. I left my office and went to the front of the house, looking out the peephole again to see if they'd gone to my front yard, but I didn't see him. I then went to a window on the back of the house and looked around, but again, there was no one out there. My adrenaline was pumping, and I was not tired at all anymore, but the now silence of the house was starting to freak me out. Did the man leave, or was he still outside? I went back to my office and got my phone, then started making my way back to the front door. My plan was to call the cops while keeping my eyes on the doors and windows, but as I got to the end of the hallway, I was met by a large figure standing in the back of the living room. He was tall and wearing thick clothes to hide his identity, but his eyes were not the same as the ones I'd seen in the window. This was someone else. The man didn't hesitate, charging across the room at me as I turned and ran for my office, locking the door behind me and pressing my body against it, preparing for them to try kicking it down. As they approached the door though, they slowed to a stop and just stood right outside of it. I could hear them breathing, then starting to walk back and forth like they were pacing in the hallway, but then I heard it again. A light knocking sound on the other side of the house. The man outside the door started to walk down the hallway back toward the living room. Then it was silent. For a few minutes, as I stayed there against the door, there was absolutely nothing. I called the cops, whispering into my phone and begging them to come quickly. I waited for about five minutes before I heard the sirens approaching my house. As they unlocked my front door and came in, there were no altercations. I heard them walk through the house and finally up to my door, and they never saw either of the men. To this day, I still don't know how the one man got in, or what the two of them were trying to do. I think the knocking was their way of communicating from inside and outside the house, but then that makes me question what the first knock was that I heard. The whole situation freaks me out every time I think about it, wondering how long the one had been watching me for, and how long the other man had been inside my house. It could have ended up so much worse for me, so I know I got lucky, but it's hard not to think about the possibility of them coming back, 
and luck isn't what I want to rely on for my safety. This only happened a few months ago. I recently moved into a very small one-story house that was close to my place of work. I used to have to drive almost an hour every day, so this move was really nice. The only thing was that I'd never really been anywhere in the area outside of where I worked, so it really was like moving to a completely different place. Anyway, this night I got off at 6 and drove straight home. I had to work again the next day, so I wasn't planning on doing much, probably just chill and eat for a bit, then get in bed. I pulled into my garage and went inside, warming up some leftover pizza in the oven, but while it was heating up, there was a ring at my doorbell. It actually made me jump because I hadn't heard the doorbell before, but I had no idea who would be here either. I walked down to the front door and looked. It was a woman. She looked maybe 50 and had long gray hair. I opened the door. Hi, how can I help you? She smiled wide and said she'd noticed I'd moved in recently. We talked for a minute as she asked about where I came from, if I had a wife or kids, and all that random small talk. Then she said goodnight and walked off. I never really had the chance to ask her who she even was, but I assumed she was just some old lady that lived down the block. But something about her though just felt off. I don't know how else to describe it, but I wasn't sure if there was actually something off, or if it was just because she was old. I went back to the kitchen and got my pizza, then sat on the couch and started looking for a good video on YouTube to watch. I found some random commentary video to run as background noise while I ate, but only 10-ish minutes passed before I noticed a noise from outside. I paused the TV and listened, realizing it was an idle car engine, but it was really loud. I got up and looked out the front window. There was a car parked right in front of my house. It was running, but all the headlights were off. I looked down both sides of the road, seeing the whole street was empty with tons of other places to park, yet they had chosen right in front of my house. I watched the car for a couple minutes but with no changes, I went back to the couch. A whole half hour went by with the car's engine still being audible right outside the house until it suddenly shut off. I paused the TV again and listened, not hearing anything else. After a minute, I got up and walked over to the window, looking out and seeing the car exactly how it was before, except it obviously wasn't running anymore. Again, nobody else was outside. It was just this one car. I shut the blinds just to make sure nobody was watching me for some reason. Then I went back to the couch and started cleaning up. But there was only a moment before a quiet thump sounded from the other side of the house. Already feeling a little on edge, I walked over to the hallway and looked down toward the kitchen. For a split second, I saw the shadow of someone walking away from the back door, as if they'd noticed me and were trying to hide. Their footsteps quickly ran around the house, toward the front, and when I looked out the window, I saw a man getting inside the parked car, driving away immediately. The first thing I did was go to the back door and open it, trying to figure out why he was out there, and it only took me a few seconds to notice that the handle on the outside was really loose, like they had been trying to take it off. Even just by pulling the flimsy handle a bit to the side, I could see the inner workings of the lock in the door, meaning he probably would have been able to unlock it, and he was only moments away from getting inside my house. I can't say for certain if the old lady from before had anything to do with it, I know it sounds strange that she would, but I thought about the questions she was asking me, which all had to do with whether anyone else lived with me. Maybe she was getting information to know if I was a good target for whatever they planned. It's been a few months since, and I've never seen her or the man again.
For the past decade, I've lived a quiet life in Utah. I own a small cabin in a town of people living the same life as me. There's a town center for shops and everything, but most people have cabins or houses a few miles out with either farms or just plain land. I didn't farm or anything, but I do have a lot of grassy land that borders some mountains. This happened almost 10 months ago now. It was around 8 p.m. one night, and I was sitting outside by the fire pit on my laptop. I did this almost every night, except when it was snowing out. It was always a calming way to end the evening before going to bed, but this night was different. I was out there for an hour, really zoned in on my laptop, when through the crackling campfire, I heard something in front of me. I lifted my head, seeing a man standing on the other side of the flame, maybe 15 feet across from me. The man looked like a typical guy in his 40s that lived around here, big and rugged, with a large gray beard. I stood up from my chair. What are you doing here? Where did you even come from? I said, trying to hide the shakiness of my voice. The man stared at me with a look I'd only assume was that of someone about to do something terrible, but then he looked past me at my house. I kept my gaze on him as he began walking toward the front of the cabin. He went up to one of the windows and quickly peered inside, saying something under his breath as he turned and started to walk away. I called out again, asking what he was doing and threw in some unfriendly words, but the guy just ignored me. He walked down all the way to where the grass met the trees and then he was gone. It was completely insane. Some guy being out here right by my house was no accident, especially not at this time of night, and the way he was acting was beyond strange. It was like he was looking for something and had no fear of intruding on me. I put out the fire right away and went inside, locking up the cabin and getting my sidearm out just in case. I didn't think he was going to come back but I wasn't sure about anything anymore. As far as the police go, calling them out here would take way too long to be a viable option. If something were to happen, I was on my own, as that's just the way things are here. I stayed up for several more hours, way past the time I usually went to bed, and kept my eyes and ears open for anything. I don't remember the time, but it had to be at least 1 a.m maybe even 2 a.m. when I finally passed out on the couch. I was trying my hardest to stay awake, but it just didn't happen. When I woke up though, there was an unusual, constant sound. Wind blowing through the house. I sat up, still confused and tired, and looked over at the front door. It was wide open. I jumped up and ran to the door, looking outside in all directions, but not seeing anything in the dark. I slammed it shut and locked it, then turned around to face the possibility of someone being inside my house. I stood there by the door for an entire minute, listening for any sounds of someone being inside. It was a small cabin, so even something like heavy breathing might be loud enough to hear but it was dead silent, only the creaking of the wood from the wind outside. I slowly stepped through the hallway and into each room, checking every corner and opening every door, but nobody was inside. After that, I stayed up all night, and as soon as the sun came up, I drove into town and filed a report with the police making the assumption that the man I'd seen that night was likely the one who'd broke into my cabin. The one issue with all of it is the motive. There were a few odd things missing, which meant he definitely had broken in and walked around the house while I was passed out, but nothing they took was worth any real value. And of course, they didn't harm me either, so what they intended is still undetermined and without knowing why they came to my cabin, there's no saying whether or not they'll come back.